so I was going to do a couple more videos tonight, but I think I'm going to spread some more out the rest of this week. Um, Eddie Van Halen, master of his instrument, redefiner of the guitar as a whole, inventor, amp maker, of course the 5150. You know the man, and you know the story, and you know that he passed away last week on Tuesday, October the 6th from throat cancer. I will preface that Van Halen was not my top of the pile, but they were up there in terms of a band that I could sit back, listen to, and go, yeah, these guys are, they, these guys kick ass. No damn doubt about it. Of course, it was probably one of the saddest days, I think, um, in the music world, you know, it's kind of in the same vein Actually, a little more in the vein uh, than Lemmy or, you know, any of those guys. Now, with Eddie, Eddie was more than just a good dude, a killer guitar player, and, you know, all that. He was just one of the greatest. And I actually think that you could almost, you could, you could almost compare this to the death of Dime. Dimebag was a different thing because he was shot on stage. But Eddie, in terms of fan base, like it's right there. Maybe even more so. Um, and a lot of Dimebag fans will probably even agree to that. You know, I mean, one of the biggest things that he Eddie did was he was a massive influence, of course, on Dimebag. Um, many, many, many musicians he influenced. Um... By his guitar playing, by what he did in Van Halen, what he did with the 5150, uh, just the guitar and the different things. How many guys have had a striped guitar based off of Eddie? Um, you know, he, with the tapping, his stretches, what he played, how he played, and when he played it. The songs that he wrote with Van Halen were some of the greatest rock and roll and some of the best, even some tracks were quite metal. Um, what he did with his guitar is probably, I don't think there's going to be anybody that's going to match him in terms of pure technicality. This guy had more talent in his pinky toenail, you know, than most people have in their entire body. Um... I mean, many different players all over the genre are using his amps, tapping like he did. I mean, you even got bass players in there too. Like even, and it wasn't just guitar players or or whatever. It was bass players that really got into the whole tapping thing. Maybe not because of Eddie, but Eddie really sparked something. Like, oh, I wonder if we could do this on the bass too. We have many different things to be thankful for um, with Eddie Van Halen um, and some of my favorite Van Halen tracks are The Cradle and The Cradle Will Rock, Panama, uh, Eruption, uh, Hot for Teacher. We I actually had that song playing when I was taking the garter off the missus at her on her wedding day. Um, just a lot, just so many great fucking songs and as sad as it is, it is so many people are still being affected by this. There are still people that are pissed off, pissed, you know, pissed off and sad that he's gone. But now there's even more people pissed off because David Crosby, folk singer himself, someone had asked his opinion about Eddie Van Halen in a tweet. And what did David say? Meh. And people kind of took to Twitter and kind of really just shredded him a little bit. I'm glad I didn't get to see it because I'm not on there anymore. Yeah, I get that Eddie Van Halen wasn't his thing. And he tried to backpedal a little bit and kind of say, well, he's not really my thing. Well, you probably should have said that at the start and said, hey, if something, because if I was David Crosby, the first thing I probably would have said was, okay, you know, he's not... Obviously, he's not my, you know, his kind of playing is not my thing. 
but I realize the massive impact he had, his his passing has left uh, on the guitar playing community. No doubt about it. I mean, I think just about every YouTuber that I watched over the last little bit has done some sort of tribute to Eddie Van Halen, and fucking thank thank you for that. It's been nice to see some guys playing his stuff, like. <laughs> And I don't think I don't think that's gonna stop for uh, the foreseeable future. And and you know what? Play his shit. Play Van Halen. Turn it up in your cars. Listen to that. Maybe nick a little bit of his stuff and kind of influence your own playing even more so than before. But on October sixth, we lost a legend. And uh, it really hasn't affected me that much. Because, uh, I mean, he, this is going to probably sound kind of bad, but he wasn't an influence on me. But at the end of the day, it's still a major, major, major loss. So to all of his fans, to all of the people he's known, my deepest condolences to you guys. Um, at least you know at the end of the day, you have a massive, massive catalog to turn up and crank every fucking day. So, the following day, on Wednesday, October the 7th, ACDC releases Shot in the Dark. <clears throat> now, as I said, while the previous day was probably one of the saddest days, this day, for some people, not all people, was good to help take that pain away. And I don't want to overshadow Eddie with talking about one of my personal favorite bands. It's just an unfortunate series of events where he passes on the 6th and they release something on the 7th. So I was kind of sad, but at the same time, I was still stoked about the following day. Now, I will still talk about this because it is a great, great song. This song is a true for, true return to form for the band. Um, they reunite with Brian Johnson, Cliff Williams, and Phil Rudd with Stevie and Angus Young. Now, basically getting these guys back together um, to record basically what they're going to call, what they're going to entitle Power Up, will be a tribute to Malcolm in its entirety. Shot in the Dark is probably one of the best rock songs that I've heard from ACDC in the last two or three, four records, maybe. Um, Brian is at his purest of form. The rest of the band's kicking ass. Oh, sorry guys, it's been a long weekend. Um, anyways, um, it's probably one of the, it's it's the most classic of an ACDC track that you're going to get. Like, you could probably fit this on any other previous record with Brian, and it would still sound amazing. Um, it's really got the rock, it's really got the blues, Angus is really fretting it out on this track. And it's not like it's it's not a speedier track, but it's one of those real good hard mid pace rockers. And it's just and to be honest, when this record comes out, I can't. I'm fucking stupid, Jack, for it. Stupid, Jack, for it. Um, but over the next couple of months, there's gonna be a lot of great records being released, and I can't fucking wait. So stay tuned uh, for ACDC. That'll be coming out soon. Um, and yeah, so. I just, I hadn't had a chance to shoot a video about Eddie in a, in a little bit. This week has been kind of hectic. And so I'm going to try to get a few more videos out the rest of the week. Uh, if you guys like this video, I, uh, you know, give it a like, share it around, subscribe if you like the channel, if you like what I'm doing here. And there's going to be some more videos coming the rest of the week. So thank you very much for watching again. And uh, don't forget to check out my review of Surface Wounds that I did just before this.